On this beautiful Sabbath morning, together with the Health Department of the East Caribbean Conference of Seventh-day Adventists, I pause to greet and welcome all our members and friends and all others joining us. To all, you are warmly welcome. We love to see you there. We want each one of you to know the love of God and to feel his presence so near. For you are very special to the Lord. And for this cause, I bid you welcome here, welcome there, welcome, welcome, welcome. Today as a church, we observe World Diabetes Day. The theme for this year 2020 is the nurse and diabetes. Who is a nurse? A nurse is a person trained to care for the sick or those with infirmities. What is diabetes? Diabetes is a disease in which the body's ability to produce or respond to the hormone insulin is impaired, thus resulting in too much blood sugar circulating in the body. The aim this year is to raise awareness around the crucial role nurses play in supporting people living with diabetes. As the number of people living with diabetes continue to rise, the role of nurses and other health profession supporting staff is becoming increasingly important in managing the impact of this condition. Nurses play a vital and pivotal role. One, they help in diagnosing diabetes early to ensure prompt treatment. Two, they provide self-management training and psychological support for people living with diabetes to help to prevent complications. Three, they tackle the risk factors for type 2 diabetes to help prevent the condition. And when we speak about the risk factors, we are referring to physical inactivity, poor nutrition, tobacco, and alcohol use. There remain a significant need for more education. As a church, we stand in a unique position to help because of our health message, which is second to none. I repeat, as a church, we stand in a unique position to help because of our health message, which is second to none. Our health director, a nurse by profession, Sister Priscilla Privo has a love for health. Not just ordinary health, but it goes beyond. She has a love and passion for the Seventh-day Adventist health message. She has not been sitting idle by, but has engaged the churches in Dominica and Barbados with numerous health sessions, get towards the management of diabetes and how it can be reversed. Today is no exception, as we will have the opportunity to hear a few testimonies and two powerful presentations. But let me pause just to mention that we are collaborating with the Dominica Diabetes Association to create a greater awareness on the island. With that being said, I implore every one of you to be attentive as the program unfold. To continue, we will ask Sister Lisa Fabian, a member of the Ben Seventh-day Adventist Church, to continue as she does for us our prayer and scripture reading. Our program lineup for today seems packed, but very interesting. One that you can't afford to miss, so you need to stay on. We have special music. 
testimonies and we have two powerful presentation our first presentation will be done by dr alicia honore felix she is a lifestyle and a functional medicine physician and she will be doing for us plant-based nutrition for diabetes reversal our second speaker will be sister Elmond Chase Grant. She will be doing for us self-care for diabetes. Sister Grant has a Master of Science with specialization in diabetes education. She also has a Bachelor of Science in phytotherapy. She's also a member of the National Institute of Medical Herbalist UK. She also has a postgraduate education certificate and she's also a UK trained diabetes educator and medical herbalist. Happy Sabbath, brothers and sisters. I would like to share with you this text from Jeremiah chapter 33 and verse 6, which says, Nevertheless, I will bring health and healing to it. I will heal my people and will let them enjoy abundance, peace, and security. What a beautiful promise that God has given us. I invite you to bow your heads with me as we pray. Dear kind and Heavenly Father, we thank you for your blessings upon us. We thank you for you being our God, our Creator, our Maker, and our King. We thank you for the promises that you have given us and the help that you have blessed us with. We thank you for your promise in Jeremiah chapter 33 and verse 6, which says that you will bring health and healing to us and you will give us peace and security. I claim this peace, security, healing, and health for everyone who's bowed here today, everyone who's lifting up their hearts to you in prayer. I thank you that those who are sick, those who lack the understanding and the wisdom that you will impart on them, the healing and the wisdom that they need. I pray that you forgive us for our wrongdoings, for where we've misrepresented you in words, in our thoughts, in our deeds, in our bad health practices that have caused us not to enjoy the best of health. I pray that you grant us wisdom, and even through this program today, that we'll be encouraged to practice better health so that we would live a better quality of life, we'll be able to draw others closer to you, and to be able to have enjoy a better relationship with you because we are in greater health. I thank you for your healing. I thank you for your blessings. I thank you for your promises. And I thank you for everyone here who is going to receive a blessing from you today. In Jesus' name, amen. Have a blessed day all.
Hi, good day, and I'm happy to be here, and nice to be able to share my story with so many persons. Ms. Privo, thank you so much, and to the Dominica Diabetes Association on World Diabetes Day, thank you for the opportunity to be part of this occasion. Um, I was asked to share my story um, as a reverse diabetic. It did not start that way. Um, in 2015, I found myself with a experiencing a few symptoms such as constant thirst, um, getting up constantly during the night, um, in addition to a few other symptoms that did not seem to be going or willing to go. So what I did, I went to the doctor and I asked, um, uh, I told him of my symptoms and the first thing he said is was like, um, you're sweet like your mother. And that was not a compliment for me because um, what he re what he meant was that my mother was diabetic and I was also following in her trail. And after doing an HbA1c test, um, I it did prove to be in the diabetic range. So the first thing that he did is said because it is not very high, um, then it is good to nip it in the bud, in the bud, and to take medication for it. So he was going to prescribe metformin for me. And I told him, no, I told him I wanted to, um, my church is a, like a healthy lifestyle church, some of the Adventist church. So I told him, let me revisit um, some of the things that have been shared during the Sabbath school um, Saturday afternoon program, the AY Adventist youth program. And let me um, contact a few friends of mine who I know are on a healthy lifestyle. lifestyle. And so that's what I did. And so he told me he's given me a month and he expects me to come back. So I took my month and I, the first day, um, the same day actually, I picked up the phone and I called Nurse Privo. So thank God for nurses that um, do their job and do it so well that they impact lives. And so when I called her, some of the things that she shared with me is that I needed to get a glucometer so I could record my readings every day, um, get a journal so I could record what my readings were um, after I eat and everything. If there's any changes, record what I ate that would have caused the changes. She also advised me to begin walking at least 45 minutes for a day. And my 45 minutes could be broken up into two um, sections or it could be broken up into 15 minute segments of the day. She said the body will record it as exercise. So that's what I did. And she could ask me to increase my water intake and to revisit my cupboard. And by that, she um, asked me to um, get rid of the the um, the foods that were not very um, were not complex carbs or were not whole grain and so she advised me to increase my um, fruit intake to increase my vegetable intake and to increase my whole grain so long story short eat everything that does not have a mother or head so it means no I could eat no meat no fish no cheese no eggs nothing to do no animal sources and within literally two weeks um my diabetes reading went from where it was to normal less than 110 so i called and i told her i was so excited i told her but um, i'm getting normal reading and i said me don't get too excited because your blood works changes in like three months so i would still have i would have to stick to it and i'd have to make a decision to either um i want to make it a lifestyle and make it allow how I eat to be part of the rest of my life. Or um, if I don't, chances are I may have to fall back. I may fall back and have to take medication. So I told her no, it would have to be a lifestyle for me. So it's what I chose and I'm thankful for it. Um, and it has been like that for 2015 to 2020, which is now. And it is not a badge of honor and i always say that because um your taste buds um challenge you um based on what you like to eat what other persons are eating your cravings what you feel for your down moments your depressed moments and your there's always something sweet that um you want to eat so um it is still a struggle i tell this brief i don't know my body is seem to be wired for sweet so it means um if i get up in the morning um the natural inclination for either juice or tea or cereal with sugar is still there but um i choose to eat differently um so that i don't have to live on diabetic medication for the rest of my life and still be 
a diabetic like my mother was for over 30 years. So I encourage it, anybody who's out there um, that want to get off the meds or they know somebody who um, is willing to be disciplined enough to um, take the risk and to um, do it and to reverse the diabetes, diabetes, it is possible and you can do it. I did it and so can you. Thank you very much. Good day. It's a pleasure to be with you today as I discuss simple steps that you can take to help control your diabetes and to live a more productive life if you are a person with diabetes. My name is Amanda Chase Wet. I am a trained diabetes educator and also a medical herbalist. I am also a trained pharmacist. Today we are going to look at diabetes self-care and you. What can you do to help your diabetes self-care? There are certain steps in diabetes self-care that you can take as a person. First, you have lifestyle, nutrition or eating habits, activity level, medi medication taking, and stress reduction. I'm not going to draw on nutrition because someone else will deal with that. But the best way for you to take control of your diabetes is taking control through your lifestyle. What is eaten impacts your diabetes significantly. So let's look at the second step, which is activity. Activity has a huge impact on diabetes care. If, as a person with diabetes, you exercise for at least 30 minutes a day, five days a week, it will significantly impact your blood glucose level. If you are a person who is pre-diabetic, exercise and lifestyle changes can halt your progression to diabetes. And if you already have full-blown diabetes, exercise and lifestyle changes, if done rigorously, can reverse your diabetes level as well. So, how will you take care of your diabetes? That's a question we all need to answer. First, let's look at medication. Medication might be offered if you are a person with diabetes and lifestyle does not control your diabetes. However, you need to understand how the medication affects your diabetes and you need to take the medication as prescribed along with the lifestyle changes. And once you do that, you can be a person who will eventually either have a lower need for medication or if you engage in total lifestyle changes, you can reverse diabetes to such an extent that you would not need to take medication. While it is important that you follow the prescription guidelines, it is equally important that you take control by implementing lifestyle changes. Stress control is also important. Once you're a person with diabetes and you allow yourself to be stressed, you're going to have a difficult time controlling your blood glucose levels. So here are some things that you can do to reduce your stress. Exercise. Find an activity that you really enjoy and take part in it. Take care of yourself. Have me time. 
And when I say me time, that is time that no one else intrude on. It can be early in the day, first thing on mornings. It can be sometime during the day when you take a break from work. Whether or not it's a five minute break, a 10 minute break, and you just relax. That is going to be critically important in helping reduce your stress levels and helping you get control. Monitor. When I say monitor, I mean that you practice self management of your blood sugar levels by using a blood glucose meter and you can monitor first thing in the morning or two hours after a meal when you first start monitoring it might be necessary to do it more than once a day for a few days until you get the best idea of how your blood sugar is being affected and then you can monitor less frequently once you are following a program. In addition to monitoring your blood glucose levels and dealing with your sugar levels, you need also to take control of how and what you are going to do in your everyday life. Have a plan and work your plan. With diabetes, it is not a sentence where everything has to go bad. With diabetes, you can live a normal, healthy life once you take control of your blood sugar levels. Be active. Engage in moderate activity at least 30 minutes per day. Brisk walking for at least five days a week is going to be beneficial for you. In addition, control your stress level. Stress produces hormones that will alter your blood sugar level. Reduce your stress levels by relaxation techniques and taking time out. Also, note that as a person with diabetes, you are in control of your life. No one controls your life as good as you can. You may go to the doctor and the doctor will come up with what he or she considers to be the best plan for you. And once you walk through the door of that doctor's office, you are in control. The nurse is not in control. The doctor is not in control. You, the person with diabetes, is in control. And therefore, you need to take that responsibility seriously. And one of the things I would like to spend just a little time on is some of the things that are bothering us here in Barbados when it relates to diabetes. And one of the bugs that we have is diabetes lower limb complications and foot amputations. As a person with diabetes, you can take part in making sure that you are not a statistic. And it starts with the shoes that you wear. Which shoe should you choose? Choose a shoe that is comfortable. Choose one that will help you to evenly bear your weight. Also, choose a shoe that fits while it might fit snug, make sure that it does not rub. Avoid bunions, avoid blisters. Also, avoid shoes that have 
torn inner linings because that can also create a problem for your foot. Some of the things that you can do, dry between your toes. Make sure that every time you have a bath, that you dry between your toes and that you dry your feet properly. Before putting on your shoes, look for foreign objects. And these foreign objects might include small pebbles and other household objects that though small can fall into the shoe and create a problem later down the road. And also note that as a person with diabetes, you need to check your shoes and you need to check your feet. For some people, it might be difficult to check your feet. So have a family member check your feet for you on a regular basis. If you don't have a family member who can check your feet for you, you can also check your feet in front of a mirror and you can learn how to do that by practicing. These are just some of the things that you can do as a person with diabetes to improve your chances of reducing complications and also to improve your life as a person with diabetes. But most importantly, remember that you can make food your medicine and make medicine your food. Thank you and have a wonderful day. Pleasant Sabbath brothers and sisters. Thank you for joining us today as we celebrate World Diabetes Day. And yes, it's a celebration despite its many complications because there is hope, there is a cure, and in many cases, it can be reversed with the adoption of a low-fat, high-fiber, plant-based diet, among other healthier lifestyle interventions. We all have vital roles to play in this diabetes awareness campaign if we want to stop the incidence and prevalence of diabetes and other non-communicable diseases that are plaguing our Caribbean and the world by extension. I am Dr. Alicia Honoré Felix, board certified lifestyle and functional medicine physician and health coach from the Nature Isle of the Caribbean, Dominica. Through my practice beyond optimal wellness, I help people find the root cause of their disease, eliminate it, and restore health and wellness for the long run so they are no longer sick or on medications for the rest of their lives. Is that even possible? Oh yes, with God's guidance, someone to hold your hand along the way, and your desire to combat disease. Diabetes and even COVID-19 is no exception. Using a plant-based diet, you can turn off those bad genes that are passed on to you and turn on the good ones to protect you from diseases. Only in plants can we find all those phytochemicals, antioxidants, vitamins and minerals that fight out free radicals and toxins from our bodies that make us ill. If your experience with diabetes has been one of gradually escalating medication doses, weight fluctuations, and increasing worry about the risk of complications, allow me to teach you today how to reverse these trends using plant-based nutrition in just six simple steps. Number one, build your meals from the power plate. Fill up your plate with fruits and vegetables, whole grains and legumes. Of course, local produce without added fertilizers and chemicals is best. So why not visit the local market more often? Or better yet, plant what you eat so that you can save some money and eat what you grow. Aim for at least three or more servings of fruit daily as they are rich in fiber, vitamins, beta carotene, and others. Example, apples, berries, grapefruit, peaches, tangerines, and plums. Two or more servings of legumes daily. They are also rich in fiber, protein, iron, calcium, zinc, and B vitamins. 
These include black eye peas, butter beans, chickpeas, green, red, lima, navy, pinto beans, lentils, snow peas, and hummus. Whole grains, at least five or more servings daily. They are rich in fiber, complex carbs, proteins, B vitamins, and zinc. Nutritious. These include barley, rye, bulgur, wild rice, tortilla, wheat pasta, and more. Four or more servings of vegetables will get you even more vitamins and minerals. These include avocado, broccoli, cabbage, cauliflower, tomatoes, cucumbers, celery, eggplant, mushrooms, peppers, squash, zucchini, turnips. Be sure to stay hydrated as two-thirds of our body is composed of and needs water for metabolic functions. Keep nuts or seeds to small handful daily, but enjoy almonds, peanuts, pecans, sunflower seeds, walnuts, olives. Who said eating has to be complicated or boring? Call me for some exciting recipes. Number two, transition to a no animal diet. You heard right. No red meat, poultry, pork, fish, dairy products, cheese, eggs. Why? All animal products contain saturated fat, cholesterol, and animal protein, which according to studies is linked to heart disease, insulin resistance, cancer, kidney problems, and other health issues. Contrary to popular belief, all the protein you need can be found in whole grains, legumes, and vegetables without added side effects. New research even suggests that cow's milk may increase the risk for developing type 1 diabetes, and so the American Academy of Pediatrics recommends the avoidance of cow's milk during the first year of life. Exercise that animal out of you and get cooking those beans into burgers and other fun options. Join my cooking class. Number three, avoid added vegetable oils and other high fat foods. Although vegetable oils are healthier than animal fats, oils are not health foods as they are high in calories. One gram of fat is nine calories compared to one gram of carbs is the equivalent of four calories. The amount of fat we need daily anyway is quite small and we can find them packed inside our vegetables, our grains and our beans. The fats and oils in animal products, they interfere with insulin's ability to move glucose into the cells and so eating less fat reduces body fat, allowing insulin to do what it was meant to do. However, choosing skinless chicken, skim milk, big fish, etc. It's just not enough if you want to beat diabetes. Avoid oily sauces, salad dressings, and fried foods in oil. Limit olives, avocados, nuts, and peanut butter. Be sure to read your labels and choose mostly foods with less than 2-3 to three grams of fat per serving. Number 4. Favor foods with a low glycemic index, meaning foods that raise your blood sugar slower or less such as beans, oats, sweet potatoes, and even white and wheat pasta, bread such as rye, multigrain, sordo, and tortillas. We are blessed in the Caribbean to have our ground provisions as well to have a low glycemic index, such as tanya, breadfruit or pepe, green bananas or fig, yam, edos, green plantain. Dashing cassava and English potatoes are a bit higher, so when consuming, Ensure there is a great balance on your plate with more fiber and vegetables. Some lower GI cereals include muesli, bran, rolled or steel cut oats, grains such as barley, parboiled rice, couscous, quinoa, corn also have lower GI. High GI foods that we should definitely avoid are sugar and sugary products like sodas, candies, white and wheat bread, cornflakes, puffed rice cereals, and others, which also raise triglyceride levels. Parents, please take note. Number five, go high fiber. Aim for at least 40 grams of fiber daily, which you can find from beans, vegetables, fruits, and whole grains, like whole wheat pasta, barley, oats, quinoa. Aim for at least three grams of fiber per serving when reading labels, and 10 to 15 grams per meal. Start slowly and be patient with your gorgeous body. 
Expect bowel changes, but only for the better. Gassiness through beans can be minimized with small servings and thorough cooking. Number six, supplement with vitamin B12, vitamin D, and curcumin, which you can find in turmeric, as it helps to remove chronic inflammation out of the body and protect your nerves and blood cells, especially if you're over 50. Brethren, don't take my word for it. Try out this simple but scientifically proven recommendations for just 21 days and be a living testimony. Whether you are diagnosed with diabetes and you want to improve your blood glucose levels, high cholesterol, high blood pressure, and you maybe want to reduce your medications or your risk for complications, and maybe even eliminate disease out for good. Even COVID-19 if you are suffering from that, or just try something new. Give yourself 21 days. I mean, what do you have to lose anyway? There's no portion control, no cab limits, no caloric restrictions. Let's fight diabetes and disease out of our bodies with a plant-based lifestyle. For more information, recipes, programs, learning how to cook, or live a plant-based lifestyle, visit pcrm.org or contact Dr. Honoré Felix at 1767 Two six five seven six nine six. Remember, everything is possible for Christ who strengthens us. Happy Sabbath. As we conclude, let us be reminded that one in ten people are living with diabetes worldwide. Diabetes can be reversed. As a church, we have a unique message, the health message, and within this health message, we have the new start. Let me just remind you about the new start. In nutrition, we need to eat right. Eat our fruits and vegetables on a daily basis. E, exercise. Daily exercise is important. Walk run, jump, swim, do your daily exercises. W, water. Drink at least eight glasses of water daily. S, sunshine. Bask in the sunlight. We are very fortunate in Dominican Barbados to have sunlight on a day-to-day -day basis. T, temperance. Moderation in what is good and total abstinence from which is bad. A. A. Breathe fresh air. We need that fresh air into our bodies so that we can continue to live and live on. R. Rest. Have adequate rest. It's important because we need to rejuvenate our body in order that we can function properly the days following. T, trust in God. Read books. Meditate upon God's word. Ponder upon it daily and ensure that his words become your words. If as a church, if as a family, if as individual, we practice the new start, and make it part of our daily living. If we adhere to the information and instructions that we have received today, we will help combat diabetes, and not just diabetes, but all the non-communicable diseases. Therefore, it is important that we take the information received and we act upon it. Remember, those of us living with diabetes, we can reverse diabetes. It can be reversed. Those of us who are not living in diabetes, we can live without diabetes if we practice the new start and if we adhere to the Adventist health message and all the other information that we have been receiving from time to time from presenters like we had this morning and our sister Priscilla Privo continues to ensure that we have adequate information to make the right choice. On this note, I want to say to each and everyone, thank you for being part of this program this morning. 
Remember the Bible is in from us. Above everything else, we wish that we prosper and be in good health. And we know also in scripture it is stated far, above, abundantly, more than we can ever think or ask. That's what the Lord wants to do for us. If we ask for help, we will receive it. But we also too have to practice what we have learned. And as we continue to do so, we will be sure that God will work it out for us and we will be healthy individuals. I want to wish each one of you a pleasant sitting for the rest of the day as we await the midday service. We know there is something in store for us, a powerful presentation. I am Adora Libla Tuse from the Ben Seventh-day Adventist Church wishing you a happy Sabbath. May God bless you. Thank you. Good morning, everyone, and happy Sabbath to you wherever you're watching from this morning. God is good, and the Bible tells us, let everything that has breath praise the Lord. So let's just praise him today with all our hearts, for he is worthy. Some of my prayer ministers are here with me today, and we are very happy to be able to celebrate the World Diabetes Day with the Health Department of the East Caribbean Conference. Our thanks to Sister Priscilla Privo for extending the invitation to us to pray for those stricken with this disease, their families and the doctors and nurses who care for them every day. We are happy to know that we serve a God who cares, a God who is still in the healing business and wishes above all that we be in good health even as our souls prosper. So we are going to pray at this time for the groups I just mentioned asking God for mercy and grace, for wisdom and understanding, and for healing, and for healing according to his will. So let us pray. Our God Almighty, Lord, we are grateful, we are thankful. We come before you with a heart of love, Lord. We are just thankful for the opportunity to be here still in the land of the living. Lord Jesus, we ask, O oh God, that you forgive us for all our sins and that you cleanse us. Make us clean before you, Father God. I pray that your Holy Spirit would continue to just mingle among us a little bit longer. <clears throat> Father, right at this moment, we want to pray for those who are stricken with this diabetes. Father God, there are many, many thousands or millions of persons in this world who are suffering with this. The Lord, I pray that you would make yourself manifest among your people. Some have it at just a very light and mild stage, while others may be so stricken to the point, Lord, where they are paralyzed or at the point of death. But in whatever situation, whatever case it is, O oh God, I pray, Father, that you bring healing according to your will. Lord, it, is, it would be best if we are able to have it reversed and live a normal life. But their Father, because of sin, and because of choices that we have made, this thing is here. But their God, there is nothing that you cannot do. So I put it into your hands. I pray that you reach down and that you touch your people and that you cover them, Lord Jesus. I pray, oh God, that you would bring comfort, bring healing. And Father, at the end of it all, May your name be lifted, may your name be glorified and be praised. For Lord Jesus, we look forward to that day when you shall come, because you said there'll be no sickness, no pain, no, no sorrow where you will take us in heaven. So Father, thank you for that promise and continue Lord to just extend your hand of mercy over your people. In your name I pray. Amen. Amen. Thank you, Lord, once again for the opportunity that you have given to us today, the Sabbath day, to come before your presence and bring the families of those who are taking care of the diabetic at their home. We present them before you, Lord Jesus. And we pray, God, today that you would manifest your spirit within them so that, Lord, truly, those who are taking care can, Lord, be, get the relevant food and you know the, the good food to them so that they can eat and put into their bodies that will eliminate or eradicate diabetes from their life. Father God, we know this disease can be reversed. 
But Lord, we pray for the relative, the families, oh Lord, to just get instruction from you that they can truly prepare healthy diet, healthy diet and good exercise and drinking of water and sunshine and rest. Oh God, rest in you. Father God, we pray for those who are taking care of them as well. And we pray for the, the, the persons as well, that they too will understand, Lord, that you promised that we should be in good health. So Lord, we pray this morning for them and we pray, dear God, that they would manifest them, their spirit in them so that, Lord, they can eat the right food as well so that they can experience good health because you want us to be healthy. Thank you for the program today. Thank you for the organizers of this program. And we pray, Lord, even as after we left, leave this program today, that our lifestyle, our, we, we, have, we will have healthy living and lifestyle changes in our life. So bless, guide, and keep those who are taking care of the, the diabetics today, those who themselves will be blessed by the program today. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. 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 Our Father who art in heaven, we thank you this morning for waking us up to see another beautiful Sabbath day. We thank you for your mercies which are extended to us day by day. We have sinned and fallen short in many ways, but we thank you for your saving grace and your unconditional love. This morning, dear Father, as we celebrate World Diabetes Day, we acknowledge you as the great physician. May we be reminded of your words, beloved, I wish above all things that thou mayest prosper and be in health. May we be obedient to the laws of health so that we can be spiritually, physically, and mentally strong. You're a God of love and a God of mercy. And it is your desire that all your children should be well. And I pray, dear Father, that we would continue to study your word so that we can be strengthened. This pandemic has taught us many things. But one thing it has told us, dear Father, is that you are in control of everything. Yes. And what was meant to be evil, you have made it a blessing to more people because yes. we are worshiping you virtually, but many more people are hearing your messages and are giving their lives to you. This morning, I pray for the doctors, the nurses, and the caregivers who have to look after all these persons who are suffering from diabetes. Dear Lord, you know that it can be challenging at times, but I pray that you will be with each one of them and that you would give them strength and courage to go on. May they be patient also because they will meet difficulties along the way. And I pray dear Lord that as they work diligently with them, that the Holy Spirit will guide them so that they will be able to do the things you want them to do and that they would even be able to reverse this condition so that they can experience better health. I pray for the health department of the East Caribbean Conference of Seventh-day Adventists. Sister Prevo, their father, is doing an excellent job and I pray that you will continue to be with her, bless her, grant her wisdom and understanding so that as she imparts the knowledge to us that we will in turn take it in so that our bodies can be better and that we'll be fit to do your work and we will have better health. I ask you to continue to be with us throughout this Sabbath day and may it be a blessing to us. And when all these days on earth shall come to an end, may we be saved in your eternal kingdom where there'll be no more sickness or sorrow, but we will be with our heavenly father. Bless us now and to the end. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. 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 And now, Heavenly Father, we thank you for the prayers offered on behalf of the diabetics, their families, and the caregivers. We are happy that we serve a God who loves and wants the best in life for us, which includes good health. And so, Father, but because of sin, we suffer from all manner of sicknesses, including diabetes. But today, we come to you, the great healer, asking for mercy. May your perfect will be done in each situation, Lord. Do as you see best. And Lord, teach us to number our days and to apply our hearts unto wisdom. Now accept our thanks for what you will do, including saving us in your kingdom when you come. These mercies we ask with the forgiveness of every sin. In Jesus' precious name we pray. 
Amen. 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 Good morning and a very pleasant Sabbath to you wherever you are. We are happy that you chose to worship with us today and I am confident that you will be blessed and informed. To the members of the Dominica Diabetic Association who are with us today, we say a very special welcome to you. If you're a person living with diabetes or a family member of a person living with diabetes, you're also welcome. If you are worshiping with us for the first time, we say welcome to you. To our regular attendees and our members, you are no less welcome. So, keep a smile on your face. Keep a praise in your heart as together today we learn how to improve our physical and spiritual life. Welcome, twice welcome. Our opening hymn today will be number 340 from the hymnal, Jesus Saves. Let us join together and sing lustily as our praise team leads out in this song. with me wherever you are for prayer dear gracious heavenly father we want to indeed thank you for your wonderful blessings towards your children 
We want to thank you for your word, dear Lord, because we are reminded that you are the great physician. You're the one that heals our diseases. You're the one that takes care of us. You are the one that we can call upon whatever situation we may encounter. Lord, Heavenly Father, this morning, as we gather together in this virtual service on World Diabetes Day to celebrate such a wonderful occasion, we want to thank you, dear Lord, for you are the God of diabetes, the one who can heal our infirmities. You're the one that knows what is the suffering of the people. And we call upon you today and we ask you a special blessing upon this service. We ask your special blessing upon all those who are going to present this morning. We ask you, dear Lord, that we all will be empowered by the end of this program, that we will be able to go forward and do better regarding our health, knowing that we can call upon you and you can heal our diseases and you can show us the way forward. You have blessed us with the gift of health ministry and we ask you, dear Lord, to continue to help us to use the words given, use that inspiration that you have given us to know what to do concerning our health. Continue to bless us and bless the proceedings today of this program. In Jesus' precious name, amen. The East Caribbean Conference of Seventh-day Adventists welcomes all our viewers to its annual celebration of World Diabetes Day. Conscious that here in the Eastern Caribbean, and in Barbados in particular, the scourge of diabetes is getting worse. We have come together in this worship service to intercede God, not only to give us the wisdom on how to manage this disease, but to reverse it. Statistics suggest that over 425 million people in the world are carrying this disease. That's approximately one in every 11 persons. While here in Barbados, it is one to every five persons. Those figures suggest that so many communities, districts, families, and persons are being impacted. Doctors are impacted, nurses are impacted, health professionals are impacted. The scourge, of, the scourge of this disease can manifest itself in other health issues like strokes, heart attacks, poor oral health, impaired circulation in the feet, blindness, and amputation, and early death. It is estimated that the Barbados government spends between 73 and $92 million every year on this disease. We want to affirm all who are uh, assisting in making those who have this disease to recover from it. We want to affirm the doctors and the health professionals, the nurses and the family members and the general community. We also want to affirm those who are dedicated to reversing by advocating a lifestyle change so as to reverse diabetes. Adventist advocates must be commended for their work. Even as I say this, let me commend our own health ministries coordinator, Sister Nurse Priscilla Prevo, who is recognized for her outstanding contribution to health and wellness in the Seventh-day Adventist community and in the general community as well. Recently, just at the Dominican's Independent Day, she was awarded the prestigious award, the Meritorious Service Award by the government of Dominica. Congratulations, Sister Privo. Congratulations also for organizing this day's service. I want to believe that the creator God who made us wants us to live healthy lives. Hence, he gives us many health laws. As we worship him today, let us discover his guidance and experience the abundant health which he wants to give us. May this service then be a step in the right direction to reducing and reversing the ravages of diabetes in individuals, in communities, in nations. God bless us. Have a wonderful service. Good day, everyone. My name is Robin Birmingham, and I'm president of the Dominica Diabetes Association. 
I thank you for the opportunity to deliver this short message as the world observes World Diabetes Day. The association is pleased to partner with the Adventist Health Ministries. Together, both organizations have organized a number of activities to mark November as Diabetes Awareness Month. We invite all to participate in these activities, especially the wellness and No Sugar November challenges being promoted. Today marks the 29th year that the international community comes together to focus on diabetes and the effects of this disease on human life. The World Diabetes Day is observed November 14th and was created in 1991 by the International Diabetes Federation and the World Health Organization. Diabetes is a leading cause of death and ill health. And so World Diabetes Day reminds us that we should take all necessary action to live healthy lives. The theme for World Diabetes Day 2020, the nurse and diabetes, nurses make a difference, focuses attention on nurses and their role in the prevention and management of diabetes. Given the critical shortage of nursing personnel and the breadth of their daily responsibilities, an important question arises. In what way can each of us contribute to making the work of the nurse more purposeful and much easier? The response lies within each one of us. Working collaboratively with your nurse and other members of your health team, becoming an integral member of that team can ensure a healthier you and greatly assist your nurse with make the difference in helping you maintain wellness. Today, the Dominica Diabetes Association salutes all nurses. In a very tangible way, the association will recognize nurses who in spite of their heavy workload in the public service, volunteer many hours to the work of the association. So at this time, let us all celebrate our nurses, pray for them, show appreciation in whatever way you can. A simple thank you can often suffice and make their day brighter. May God bless our nurses, may God bless all our healthcare professionals, and may God bless us all. I thank you. He is good, and his mercies endures forever. Today, as you return your tithe and offering to the Lord, please do so with a willing heart, and the God of heaven will reward you with his bountiful blessings. Please continue to return your tithe and offerings to your churches. The conference's account information is also available on your screen. Let us pray. Dear Father, we thank you for another blessed Sabbath day. We thank you, Lord, for the resources that you have blessed us with. And as we give back a portion of what belongs to you, we pray, Lord, that you will bless it and that it will further your work in this part of the vineyard. For Christ's sake, amen.
Priscilla Pavot from Dominica has 45 years of professional experience in the field of nursing. 19 of those years, she served as family nurse practitioner in the St. Joseph Health District Ministry of Health in Dominica. She's the founder and manager of Healthy Lifestyle and Corporate Wellness Services. She's an innovator of the wellness industry and pioneer of the Employee Wellness Program in Dominica. From 2005 to present, she has been serving as the health coordinator of the East Caribbean Conference of Seventh-day Adventists, which consists of the islands of Barbados and Dominica. She holds a Master of Public Health degree from the University of Liverpool and recently completed a postgraduate certificate in project management with the same university. She keeps updated by participating in numerous continuing education programs in health and other related fields. In June 2015, she was asked to serve as Associate Agile Coordinator for the East Caribbean Conference of Seventh-day Adventists with special responsibilities for Dominica. She coordinated the relief and recovery for the Seventh-day Adventist Church following the passage of Tropical Storm Erica, which devastated Dominica in August of 2015, and Hurricane Maria in September of 2017. This includes managing a resettlement housing program for displaced families. Six three-bedroom housing units were handed over to the beneficiaries in August of 2017 and one three-bedroom unit in August of 2020. She is known in Dominica and further fields for her Healthy Living broadcast on DBS Radio every Tuesday and also the Power Breakfast also on DBS. Sister Prevo is well known by many as Nurse Prevo. She loves the Lord and has a passion for healthy living and well-being. Before Sister Prevo speaks to us, let us all meditate on the words of the song, I am the God that healeth thee by Don Moy. I am the God that he let thee I am the Lord your healer and I sent my word and I healed your disease I am the Lord your healer this is his word I am the God that he let thee I am the Lord, your healer, and I sent my word, and I healed your disease. I am the Lord, your healer. This is God's word. It's his promise. 
In Exodus 15, verse 26, he says, I am the God that healeth thee. In Psalm 107, verse 20, he sent his word and healed us. The Bible says his word will not return void, but it will accomplish the purpose for which it is sent. <laughs> God's word in the name of Jesus is more powerful than cancer, heart disease, or any disease that you can name today. So let's put his word on our lips and let his healing come to us as we sing it to him. You are the God that healeth me. Let his healing come as we sing. So. You are the God that healeth me. You are the Lord, my healer. You sent your word and you healed my disease. You are the Lord, my healer. Sing it. You are the God. You are the God that healeth me. You are the Lord, my healer. You sent your word and you healed my disease. You are the Lord, my healer. You sent your word and you healed my disease. You are the Lord, my healer. Yes, you are. Happy Sabbath to everyone. I join with those who have gone before me in welcoming you to this online uh, virtual church service in recognition of World Diabetes Day. Thank you, Sister Adora, Nurse Adora Toussaint, for a wonderful Sabbath school this morning, for those who participated, for our prayer ministers who prayed, with and for us, and also for the president who delivered his special message. All those who have participated and will participate in this service, a special thank you to you. Permit me to share my screen with you as we go through this message today. Okay, so anywhere you see this, um, this logo, this is the World Diabetes Day logo. This is the World Diabetes Day logo. Yes, the 14th of November every year is recognized as World Diabetes Day. And it, is, it was out of concern, a little history of World Diabetes Day, out of concern for the increased incidence and prevalence of diabetes globally, the international Diabetes Federation in 1991 decided to select a day to heighten the awareness of diabetes, its management and prevention. The 14th of November was chosen as this is the birthday of Frederick Bantin, one of the co-founders of insulin used to treat diabetes. Charles Bess was his partner in this venture. The Health Ministry of the East Caribbean Conference is happy to partner with the Dominica Diabetes Association in recognizing this day, this year. Personally, I have always partnered with the association. In 2001, 19 years ago, I partnered with the association in bringing a podiatrist to Dominica in the person of Brother Michael Bell from the Maranatha Seventh-day Adventist Church. He provided podiatry services to Dominica until 2017, prior to Hurricane Maria. He did this during his annual vacation. That same year, we conducted the first diabetes reversal seminar in Dominica and the second in Barbados. In 2018, we held a prayer breakfast in St. Joseph Health District 
and repeated this in 2019 in both Dominica and Barbados. Here are some of our lovely pics, as you can see. This was the program in Barbados last year. And um, this was here in Dominica. In fact, in Dominica, we had three different sites. We had a site at the, a site at the Maho um, Community Center, and uh, we had one at Benz, as you can see in this picture, and we also had one at Wesley. And uh, after breakfast, there was a digestive walk, and you can see persons having their digestive walk in Dominica as well as in Barbados. The theme this year is um, the nurse and diabetes. Nurses makes the difference. However, we have coined our theme, the nurse and diabetes going beyond management and control. Today, the Lord has directed me to speak to you on the topic, do you want to get well? The World Health Organization defines health as a state of complete physical, mental, social, well-being and not merely the absence of disease or infirmity. However, something was missing. And in 1984, at the World Health Assembly, the spiritual dimension was added in the strategy for achieving health for all by the year 2000. The diagram here represents the four dimensions. And you can see how they interrelate. You can see the interconnectedness with the four dimensions, the physical, the spiritual, the mental, and the social. And when one is affected, the others sympathizes. Uh, wellness, described or defined by the Oxford Dictionary, is a state of being in good health as an actively pursued goal. And I liked the, I like this word, actively pursued goal. So wellness is not something that just happens. It has to be actively pursued. And the Global Wellness Institute defines wellness as an active process in which activities, choices, and lifestyle leads to a state of holistic health or total health. So again, going back to the three, the four dimensions, it is a combination of all four. So my definition of wellness goes like this, being physically fit, which includes having normal blood sugar, normal blood sugar, blood pressure, and cholesterol levels. There are other things that need to be normal as well. Mentally, being mentally alert, having a sound mind, being socially and emotionally adjusted, being able to relate with your um, your neighbors, your co-workers, your family, and finally, spiritually sound, enjoying a good relationship with your God, our maker, and our redeemer. Now, follow me a bit as we go through Jesus's healing ministry. Remember our topic for today, do you want to get well? Matthew chapters 8 and 9 gives us a good view of Jesus' early work as he ministered to people. In chapter, in chapter 8, right after um, addressing the Sermon on the Mount, Jesus went, he had come down from the mountain, great multitudes followed him. Verse 1 tells us, and the first person, the first account given here is that of a leper who came and worshiped him saying, Lord, if you are willing, you can make me clean. Then Jesus put his hands and touched him saying, I am willing, be clean. Now remember, lepers at that time were considered unclean and persons were not allowed to touch them probably like we have um, COVID right now. And, uh, but Jesus touched him and said, be thou clean. And uh, immediately, immediately, the Bible tells us, and I'm reading from the New King James Version, immediately his leprosy was cleansed. 
And Jesus said to him, see that you tell no one, but go your way and show yourself to the priest. Why the priest? At the time, it is the priest that would declare the, leprous, the, the leper cleansed, right? So although Jesus healed him, he told him to go to the priest. Following that, um, he healed the centurion's servant in verses 5 to 13. He healed the centurion's servant. And then he went to Peter's home. And Peter's mother was sick with a fever. And again, he touched Peter's mother. And the fever left her. And she got up, went to the kitchen, and started preparing meal for Jesus and, um, and, and his disciples. So nothing is too big, like leprosy or COVID, or too small, like a little fever for Jesus to heal. Then he went on. Many persons were healed. When the evening had come, they brought to him many who were demon-possessed. And he cast out the spirits with a word and healed all who were sick. He healed how many? Some? No. He healed all who were sick, that it might be fulfilled, which was spoken by Isaiah the prophet, saying, he himself took our infirmities and bore our sicknesses. Father, we are so thankful for your blessings. We thank you for Jesus, who is, who is still our great physician. And what he did back then, he is still able to do today. So I pray that you will take control of me, my person, as I as I'm used as your instrument to speak to your people today. May your presence be in every home or in every church, not only to bless, but also to heal today. In Jesus' name, amen. Yes, and that was not all. He went, um, there were two demon men who were possessed coming from the tomb, and they were possessed, two men who were possessed with demons. And Jesus cast the demons out, and he asked, where should they go? The demons asked, where should they go? And Jesus, and they, and they answered, and they said, send them into the herd of swine. They washed into the herd of swine, and the herd of swine went down and got drowned in the sea. And verse, um, verse, verse chapter 9, he went on. There, were, there was a leprous man. He healed them. Then later on, he healed two blind men. He healed them. A man was mute, which means he couldn't speak. Um, he was um, disabled. He couldn't speak. And um, he healed him. And in verse 35 of chapter 9, the Bible tells us, Then Jesus went about all the cities and villages, teaching in their synagogues, preaching the gospel of the kingdom and healing every sickness and healing every sickness and every disease among the people. But when he saw the multitude, verse 36, he was moved with compassion for them because they were like sheep scattered having no shepherd. And so today, many are sick. In, in, in Ministry of Healing, the servant of the Lord, Sister Ellen G. White, the prophetess, says, varied were the circumstances and needs of those who besought his aid. And none, none who came to him went away unhelped or unhealed. From him flowed a stream of healing power, and in body, mind, and soul, men were made whole. Today, I want you to, I want to take you again to John chapter 5, verses 1 to 14. In John chapter 5, verses 1 to 14, gives us a, 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 an account of another person that Jesus healed. And this is what our message today is based on. Verse from verse 1 says, this was our scripture reading, After this, there was a feast of the Jews, and Jesus went up to Jerusalem. Now there is in Jerusalem, by the ship gate, a pool, which is called in Hebrew, Bethesda, having five porches. In these lay a great multitude of sick people, blind, lame, 
paralyzed, waiting for the moving of the water. Four in verse four, four, that's what they believed. An angel went down at a certain time into the pool and stirred up the water. Then whoever stepped in first after the stirring of the water was made well of whatever disease they had. And so there was this man that Jesus came in contact with in one of the porches. Verse five, now a certain man was there who had an infirmity for 38 years. Remember, 38 years. When Jesus saw him lying there and know that he had already been in that condition a long time, he said to him, do you want to get well? My friends today, wherever you are listening from, today, whether you are a diabetic, whether you suffer from cancer, whether you have hypertension, any of the non-communicable diseases, but today we are focusing on diabetes. If you have diabetes, today Jesus is passing by and he's asking, do you want to be made well? Yes, cardiovascular disease, these are the diseases today. Hypertension, diabetes, according to the World Bank data, um, between the ages of 20 to 79, in Dominica, 11.6% of persons within the ages of 20 to, 20 to 79 have a diagnosis of diabetes. In Barbados, it is 13.4%, and that was as of 2019. What are diseases that people are sick of today? Cancer. We know cancer is on the, on the rise. Um, respiratory illnesses, mental illnesses. And remember, we're not only talking physical, it's mental, social, spiritual. So mental illnesses, anxiety and depression, especially in this time of the pandemic, anxiety and depression is on the rise. This was a, a, a graph, this is a graph um, of 2014, what the situation was like. You can see here um, diseases of the circulatory system, which includes hypertension, because we are told, according to research here in Dominica, in Barbados, between 30 and 40% of the population um, uh, suffering from high blood pressure. Over here is, um, neoplasm. Neoplasms mean, uh, neoplasms mean um, cancers, yes? Um, malignant neoplasms. And that, is, that was 23% then, would be higher now. Over here we have, that is for Barbados, we have the endocrine and metabolic diseases, and that's where diabetes fits in. Now, although you might find diabetes is a smaller part of the pie than the neoplasms and the um, and the circulatory diseases, yet endo, endocrine is like diabetes. It creates a lot of other conditions, blindness, kidney failure, um, and leg amputations, and uh, even heart disease as well. So uh, while it may be smaller than the others, but it has significant impact. Now, this is the um, picture for Dominica. As I said, this, is, this was 2014, right? And this is from the Pan American Organization, World Health Organization um, information platform. You can go there and you can find this. So we know this is, this is the, for Dominica, this is where diabetes um, fit in then, okay? <clears throat> So the question is asked today. You may be lying on your bed, you may be in your home, you may be at the hospital or wherever you are today. Uh, Jesus is coming by and he's asking, do you want to get well? Now in verse seven, in verse seven, the man responded by saying, sir, I have no one to put me into the pool. When the water is stood up, 
but while I am coming, someone steps down before me. Yes, victim mentality. Jesus is asking him, do you want to get well? What should be his response? Yes, sir, I want, you know, come heal me. He started complaining and probably that is why he was still there all that time. Sir, I have no one to put me into the pool. Somebody is coming to ask you if you want to get well. He didn't recognize who was speaking to him because Jesus did not come to take him, to put him into the pool. Jesus came to bring him health here and now. But we like to make excuses. Today, you might be saying, yes, I want to get well, but you know, I want to eat healthy, but those foods, those health foods, they are expensive and uh, um, I cannot uh, afford them. And what exercise? No, those, those, um, those squats, that are too much, a hundred squats a day, that is part of the Diabetes, um, uh, Domda, Diabetes, Dominica Diabetes Association Challenge. For this week, 100, 100 squats. But we can make it, we can do it. I've been doing it 25, four times a day. Or you can do 50 twice a day, but get the 100 in. But we make excuses, we cannot do this. This is too much, this is too hard. You know, so there, you, can, you can think of yourself what excuses that you make. But um, I attended a, a, one of the um, programs in Orlando where Dr. Pastor Mark Finley um, presented one Sabbath. And he said that God heals in three ways. God heals immediately, he heals intermediately, and he heals ultimately. How does he heal immediately? Yes, we can pray like we have prayed for you this morning. And by faith, you accept and God heals. He heals immediately. And we have some of those um, persons, when you go back to, to Matthew chapters 8 and 9, and even with this man and the pool of Bethesda, that he was healed immediately. Yes? And that is happening still today. Yes, God still heals. But he also heals intermediately. The intermediately means he heals, but it takes time. And that is where lifestyle changes comes in. Because the, the conditions that we have, they did not just come overnight. They came as a result of a lifetime of bad health practices. And so to get them out, it takes a little time. So you do your exercise, you change your diet, all the new star things that Sister uh, Toussaint told us about this morning in Sabbath school. And it will take a while, but eventually you feel and you experience the, the change, you experience the rejuvenation, and of course you, you, you obtain healing. God heals ultimately. There are some people who do all that they can, but probably they started too late and uh, um, they, they, they die, right? Ultimate healing, if you die in Christ, we have the hope of the resurrection, that you will live again. And as our sister prayed this morning, those who die in Christ, we know that we will certainly live again. Today we are talking about diabetes. To understand the healing process, the healing from diabetes, we must appreciate the cause and effect principle, as well as the risk factor concept. If we carry the notion that diabetes is hereditary, then there is nothing or very little that we can do about it. Very little we can do about it. But if we accept the fact that diabetes is as a result of our lifestyle, the things we do or the things we do not do, the things we eat or the things we do not eat, um, the amount of sleep we get, the amount of exercise that we do, then if we accept that, then we know that if we change things around, we can prevent as well as reversing the result. Gone are the days when, and all to our nurses who are here with us, or health practitioners who are here with us today, we are saying that gone are the days when we told people, you have diabetes and you have it for life. No, this is a, this is a, 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 a death sentence. But today we know, research have shown that it can be prevented, but it can also be reversed. And this is why our theme for um, today and 
even for our training session on Tuesday, is going beyond management and control. Yes, we talk about living with diabetes, but you can live without diabetes. And so if you have um, had typhoid, right, and your typhoid have been treated, and you no longer have typhoid, you cannot say you are living with typhoid, your typhoid has been healed because you have removed the cause. The cause is the salmonella typhi. Now, chronic disease is different from communicable disease. But still, if we get rid, if your diabetes was brought about by obesity and you lose the excess weight that have been blocking the, um, the receptor sites, as you'll see in a while, then you have healed yourself from diabetes by the grace of God. And this, um, here we have a diagram of the, of, of the um, stomach and the pancreas. Now, the um, diabetes have a lot to do with insulin, insulin production. And we know that there are two types of diabetes, type 1 and type 2. Type 1, where there is inadequate production of insulin. But for type 2, generally, we know it is not a problem of production of insulin. The individuals have enough insulin, more than enough insulin. But the problem is usually at the receptor sites. So here we have, um, on, on this side here, you have the, the blood, circulating blood, and over here is like the tissue. This is a schematic diagram. Yes, and um, in the blood, the, the insulin, well, when we eat whatever carbohydrates and even some protein, because um, protein also has um, carbohydrate. When it gets into the, when it gets into the, blood, it is digested, it is turned into sugar, um, glucose first, and the glucose, that kind of sugar that is in the, in the blood. And the, the, sorry, the insulin is produced to transport the sugar into the cells. But for them to get into the cells, you need these receptors, what we call receptor sites. So the receptors they grab, um, brother um, Jim Brackett called them sugar grabbers, right? So they grab the sugar, which is transported here on the insulin, the receptors as the yellow um, things here, they grab the sugar with the insulin and then they send it into the, into the cell. So here you see where the, um, here, the, 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 the receptor has taken the sugar and it sends it into the, into the tissue, right? With the insulin. And that is what provides us with energy to work, to talk, to move, to do everything that we have to do. When there is no energy in the, in the cell where it is required, then you suffer from lethargy, from uh, fatigue, tiredness, and so because there's not enough energy. And because there is too much, or when there's too much sugar in the blood, you have an elevated blood sugar. You pass urine often. At the same time, you're feeling hungry because the sugar is not getting into the cell to provide the energy that is required. So the problem here is not that you type 2 diabetes, Matthew, type 2, not that you do not have enough insulin. The problem is the receptors, so they are not managing properly. They are not doing what they're supposed to do, probably because there is either too much fat in the tissues or there is too much fat in the blood, which prevents the receptors from working properly. So when we understand that, we understand how we can reverse and how we can, you know, even heal from diabetes. Because if we work rather than work at the, at the pancreas level, where the problem, that's not where the problem is. If we work at the receptor sites, and if we understand it is a problem of too much fat, we get rid of the excess fat in the body, in the tissues, in the blood, by changing our, our diet, then we will have better um, functioning of the receptor sites, hence our blood sugars being normal.
there we have here we have the the risk factors four major risk factors um, lack of exercise and the World Health Organization have recognized the four major risk factors. Sister Tuse told us about them. Lack of exercise or inadequate exercise, unhealthy eating, and um, tobacco smoke and alcohol. So, but here for diabetes, we have the four major risk factors. Three are um, what we call um, modifiable risk factors. Lack of exercise, we can get up and exercise. And this is why the Diabetes Association is recommending um, for this week, the, this week just passed, the 200 squats a day. And uh, you know, doing the research on the squats, it helps to strengthen your core, it helps to strengthen your muscles, your ligaments, your joints, and it is a good exercise to include in your workout. And of course, with the women's ministry, we've been also having with Sister, um, Beverly John, every Sunday morning at six o'clock, this um, half an hour of very good workout. So join us tomorrow morning at six o'clock. Um, you, can, you can check with Sister Hoyt or myself to get the link for the exercise tomorrow morning. But regular exercise, uh, 30 to 60 minutes every day, and exercise is accumulative. So you can, you can um, do 15 minutes, three times or four times a day. And uh, Sister Samuels told us about that even in her testimony this morning. Unhealthy eating. And uh, um, Sister Dr. Honory shared with us this morning about the plant-based diet and plant-based nutrition and how research shows how plant-based nutrition can help to reverse diabetes. And of course, exercise and healthy eating will help to manage the overweight and the obesity that we are um, experiencing uh, here. Family history, of course, um, Sister, Sister uh, Honore also told us that you can turn bad genes into good genes. So if you know your family, uh, um, there is a family, strong family history of diabetes in your family, then the onus is on you really to get onto the exercise and healthy eating in order to prevent yourself from going down that same way. Today, I submit to you that Jesus heals. Whichever way that God chooses to heal, that is his prerogative. What is required on our part is obedience. Um, verse 8 says, Jesus said unto him, rise. Verse 8 of John chapter 5. Jesus said to the man at the pool, rise take up your bed and walk. And immediately the man was made whole, took up his bed and walked. A man who was lying there for how many years? In fact, he was in that condition, the Bible tells us, for 38 years, whether he was at the pool for 38 years, but the, the, the fact is he was disabled for 38 years. And Jesus just told him, take up your bed. If this man had continued making excuses Oh, you can tell me, take up my bed and walk. I have not been able to walk. I am here. I cannot walk. You tell me, take up my bed. And... You know the excuses we like to make? We don't believe. We don't believe what God says. God says fourth, we say first. God say um, 10, we say nine. You know, and those kind of things. So we have to take God at his word and be obedient. God has given us several laws. We have the moral law the Ten Commandments in Exodus 20, verses 3 to 17. We, we also have civil laws. Civil laws, Israel operated under theocratic government, so they had their own laws. They were like a nation of themselves, and they were given laws to govern them. And they had health laws as well. Today, we are in, not in a theocratic government, so we live in a society their government, their rules, their, um, their, their, their laws that govern this country, Dominica, as well as Barbados. And even with COVID-19, they have placed laws. Now, we were not, we were sort of at liberty to use masks or not to use masks. But because of the spread, increased spread of the coronavirus, and because the science and research have showed that use of the mask helps to prevent the infection. 
because people will not obey, will not listen, will not follow guidelines, then these guidelines have to be have to be legalized, have to be placed in a in a way that gives the authorities the authority to prosecute if the if the um, the laws are, are, are not adhered to. So the use of masks is right now being um, mandatory here in Dominica, as in some other countries. Um, you know, back there, there were health laws. The Leviticus chapter 7 was 22 to 27, and chapter 11, the foods that should have been eaten. So we know that God gave man plants from the very beginning. But after the flood, man was permitted to eat flesh, but they were not permitted to eat any flesh. God gave guidelines in terms of what flesh should be eaten and what flesh should not be eaten. Today, we know that even flesh foods, even the clean foods, because of the way that we consume those foods, the preparation method and the amount that we use, that have contributed greatly to many of the non-communicable diseases. And so the research on the plant-based um, diet, preventing those conditions, those chronic conditions is there for us. The law of sacrifices, there was laws governing sacrifices, the law of cleansing and law of Sabbath, not the Sabbath of the 10 commandments, but they had other special Sabbaths and they had annual feasts. Now, these are the laws, these sacrifices. When Jesus came as our sacrifice for sin, this is the law he did away with, not the law of the Ten Commandments. So when we say the law is abolished, no, 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 not the Ten Commandments law, which says thou shalt not kill, thou shalt not steal, remember the Sabbath day to keep it holy. That is not the law that was abolished. The law where you had to bring a lamb for sacrifice. Jesus is the lamb that was slain from the foundation of the world. So if we look at the, the moral law, the law of the Ten Commandments, um, commandment number one, two, and three talks about respect and honor for God. Commandment number four also respects about honor for God as well. But this is a blessing. Remember the Sabbath day to keep it holy. Six days shall thou labor and do all your work. So it is a command to keep the Sabbath, the seventh day, like today but it's also a command to work. So you work for six days and you rest on the Sabbath day. Not a Sabbath day, but the Sabbath day. Financial, it also brings financial, spiritual, and physical blessings, the Sabbath. If you have not, well, today you have an opportunity to observe and to keep the Sabbath. Um, commandment number five says, honor your parents, honor your father and your mother, respect and care for them. There is a blessing of longevity for those who honor and care for their parents. Verse um, 13, um, commandment number six, thou shalt not kill. We should have respect for life, the li our own lives and the lives of others. So if you die prematurely because you, you eat yourself to death or you work yourself to death, you know, my, my grandfather always say, um, hard work doesn't kill people is laziness. So in fact, why you say, um, to avoid wet pack a tree, say, for your tis kick a tree. Um, of course, for our patient friends listening today, hard work doesn't kill, is laziness. And now I understand this more than ever before, because when and if we are lazy, you do not exercise, and so you develop diabetes, you develop high blood pressure, and that is what, what, what kills. Um, uh, the commandment number seven says, thou shalt not commit adultery. And there he speaks of sexual immorality. So your um, God is still who made family, made husband and wife. And a sexual um, relationship should be between a man and a woman according to how God um, designed it. And uh, it should be um, uh, within marriage. Verse 15 talks about um, the commandment number eight, thou shalt not steal, do not steal. Um, what does not belong to you? Um, thou shalt not be a false witness against your neighbors. Do not tell lies, you know? And um, commandment number 10, thou shalt not covet. Um, you know, covetousness is one of the things that you don't actually see, but covetousness leads to adultery. Covetousness leads to stealing. Covetousness leads to killing. Covetousness leads to 
even not keeping the Sabbath. You covet what belongs to God. The fourth commandment, the fourth day, is God's holy Sabbath day. Now, the health laws. Um, Sister Toussaint told us about the new start, and I will not go through them. She has mentioned them already, nutrition, exercise, water, sunlight, temperance. And there is um, biblical support for all of these laws of health. So the eight laws of health can help to reverse diabetes. Today, we are asking, Jesus is asking, do you want to get well? And if you are at that pool of Bethesda this morning, you are in the hospital, you are at home, but you have a diagnosis of diabetes, this morning, this message is particularly directed to you. And to our health professionals, our nurses, our doctors, our healthcare providers who are here today, we want to let you know that Jesus is still in the healing business. And while he has appointed you to assist those who are suffering from diabetes, he's also informing you that you can be of support and of help to these individuals. So, um, how can diabetes be prevented for those who do not have it yet, who are listening today? Exercise daily, 30 to 60 minutes, or 15 minutes three times a day, as was said before. Eat a plant-based diet, and Sister uh, Honore told us a little bit about that, and she will have a special session at our training on Tuesday. Avoid the consumption of meats, fats, and oil she mentioned that to us this morning get to your ideal weight as much as possible we are a bit comfortable with our overweight um situation our um abdominal distension the um how we call it muffin tops and sometimes we call them extra tight. we we are comfortable but we need to get uncomfortable and get this off it doesn't have to be this way it can be different get adequate rest seven to eight hours of sleep nightly. Persons who suffer from sleep deprivation, can it can cause um, overweight. And Dr. Natalie Graves in a program um, with, with the Southern District, the New Start program, explained that quite nicely last Sunday. Um, reduce and manage stress as much as possible because the stress produces the stress hormones and that in itself leads to um, development of diabetes. Drink eight to 10 glasses of water daily. So although the last week, the um, Diabetes Association Challenge recommend 1.5 liters of water, which is about six eight ounce glasses, the recommendation is to go to, that is the minimum. We need to get to eight to 10 because you need half of your body's weight in ounces of water on a daily basis. So now you know, that um, diabetes can not only be prevented, but it can also be reversed. One hour of physical activity is worth five units of insulin. So this is very important. Now, if you have diabetes, how do you reverse it first? Obtain a glucometer to monitor yourself. Um, Sister, Sister uh, Samuels told us that this morning, this was my recommendation to her, um, check your HbA1c every three months, because while the glucometer measures your daily glucose level, which can change based on your level of activity, based on what you eat, when you eat, it changes. However, the HbA1c tests the concentration of sugar at the cell level, and that changes every three months. So you get a better idea of your control or your reversal by having an HbA1c check done. Check your feet every day. And uh, that's why we had Brother Michael Bell, the podiatrist, coming into Dominica on an annual basis. But you have to check your feet every day and have an annual podiatrist visit. So in Barbados, we have several podiatrists. We do not have any in Dominica, but um, we hope Dr. Bell, Brother Bell, can, can start coming back to Dominica even as our borders are open. We will follow the protocols. So we are encouraging um, persons to check their feet themselves. You can get a mirror and uh, look underneath the feet, check because because of circulatory problem, some people may have problems with their feet and not be aware. 
if you are on medication, pay attention to this. If you are on medication, take them until you are advised to reduce or stop and advised by a professional. So do not say, well, I am following the Sprivo, I'm following this lifestyle or what the Adventist people say. You know, I, uh, uh, and so I'm, I'm not taking medication. You have to continue taking your medication, but you need to monitor your blood sugar. This is why you need to have a glucometer. So you monitor, you check your blood sugar and know exactly where you are at. You take this record to your physician, to your nurse practitioner, and you let them see your records and they will reduce the medication until eventually it can be stopped. Because if you continue taking the same dosage of the medication as your blood sugar is going down, you will find yourself into a, a, a coma, a hypoglycemic coma or hypoglycemia, which is low blood sugar. And you do not want that to happen to you. So keep your records, keep your, um, do your blood sugar um, regularly. You may have to do it sometimes twice a day for the first two weeks, you know, and eventually you could do it once a day and then probably at least once a week to ensure that everything is maintained and is okay. Stick to a plant-based diet and do digestive work. The digestive work is a work right after you have um, finished eating. You don't do active walk or brisk walking, but a casual walk for 15 minutes, 15 to 20 minutes after every meal that helps in regulating the blood sugar. And so um, in John chapter 5 verse 14, continuing the story of this man, um, the Bible says, behold, Jesus said to the man, behold, thou art made whole, sin no more, lest a worse thing come upon unto thee. So, um, if we have been doing things that cause us to get sick and we stop them for the time being, but we go back to them, we will get back the same problem because that is what brought it on in the first place. So this is why we talk about lifestyle changes. You continue it for a lifestyle. It may be difficult, but if we think of the 21 day principle where um, habits, uh, made within 21 days of doing the same thing over a period of time for 21 days, then that replaces the old habit. So you're changing your diet, you've done it for 21 days, don't go back to the, the, the old lifestyle. Keep moving, keep con continuing. Same with exercise. Um, you develop a routine. Yes, you might change certain things to either increase your intensity, change your, your, your route, change the type of exercise, but you continue exercising. And maintain, to maintain wellness, we must be, um, wellness must be sought after. Remember our definition when we began? It must be sought actively after. In other words, you do not sit down and expect to be well. You have to do things on a consistent basis. And Exodus 15, 26, that's what I will leave you with. Um, Exodus 15, 26 is a very um, familiar uh, verse, and I just want to read it for us. Exodus 15, 26 says, And said, If thou will diligently heed the voice of the Lord your God, and do what is right in his sight, give air to his commandments, and keep all his statutes, not some, and we um, spoke about them this morning, keep all of his statutes. I will put none of the diseases on you, which I have brought on the Egyptians, for I am the Lord who heals you. So he prevents, he helps to, to um, keep us well, and he also heals us from diseases, even as he healed the people back then. Egyptian, Egyptian diseases. Research uh, has been done on the mummies, the dead bodies. The Egyptians preserved their dead bodies and they could do um, post-mortem on those, on those mummies and they recognized that they had clogged arteries, atherosclerosis, and, and um, they had um, uh, cancers, what we call today cancers. 
and, and they had all those diseases. They had arthritis and those very same diseases that we have today. This is what the Egyptians had. And God says, if we will hearken diligently, in other words, take time to listen and to follow all God's counsels and guidance, he will put none of those diseases upon us that he has placed upon the Egyptians because he is the God who heals us. So today, um, these are some of the references here from the presentation today. And uh, I am thankful for the opportunity that God has given to us to be here together today that we can learn how we can be well from diabetes. Bow your heads with me as we pray. Father, we are so thankful. We bless and exalt your most holy name. Thank you, Lord, for all those who have gathered here to worship with us today. And I thank you for the message that you have given to us, that Jesus is here. He's asking if we want to be well. And today, today I cannot see the hands. I cannot see the individuals who are worshiping with us, but they have heard your voice and they are saying, I want to be well. So Father, like you did for this crippled man at the pool of Bethesda, I pray that you will just speak the word even now. You have already spoken. I pray that we'll just accept, get up and walk and literally walk, walk to prevent diabetes, walk to heal us from diabetes, walk to heal us from cancer, walk to heal us from arthritis, from because of the joints that are, that are you know, not lubricated. I pray, oh God, that you will just do it for us today. We claim your blessings and we claim your healing in Jesus' precious name. Amen. Amen. God bless you. And, uh, um, do enjoy. Have a wonderful day. See you at the exercise tomorrow morning. And of course, we will continue with our health challenges. No sugar November month. Let us remember that as well. And let us continue to adhere to all of God's principles. God bless you. Have a great day. We want to thank Sister Prevo this morning for that inspiring and thought-provoking message on the importance of our health professionals, especially our nurses, in the fight against diabetes and other non-communicable diseases. Let's close off now with a word of prayer on their behalf. Thank you, Lord, for this beautiful Sabbath day where we've come apart to worship you. We want to thank you also, Lord, for those who have dedicated their lives helping others in their sickness and uh, in their health-related issues, especially our nurses. Lord, I want to ask you to bless them. Encourage their ministry in your honor. Especially continue to guide Nurse Prevo as she brings the health message to millions on this platform. Give her courage and strength and health so that she may proclaim this message far and wide. And Lord, help us to do our part that we can proclaim your message far and wide, that you are soon coming. You're coming not only for a prepared people, but you're coming for people who love you and desire to serve you with their whole hearts. And Lord, we ask all of these mercies in your name's sake, and may your kingdom come for Christ's sake. Amen. In case you have fallen by the wayside of life, your dreams, your vision shattered, you are broken inside. For the potter wants to put you back together again. Oh, the potter wants to put you back together again. In case your situation has turned upside down, and, and all, all that you've accomplished is now on the ground. No, no. Dream. For the potter wants to put you back 
together again Oh, the potter wants to put you back together again You who are broken Stop by the potter's house You who need mending Stop by the potter's house Give him the forever Put you back together again. 